Sup folks, this is the part 6, of what if the coup, was a quirkless violent, chapter 25. In Nezu's office. So what was that all about? Azawa asked Madrai and Nezu, Azawa, All Might, and Recovery Girl were all waiting for Madraya's explanation of what just happened. I'm going to make it simple. I have all for one inside me. Madraya replied how? There is no way. All Might added now hold on All Might let's hear Madraya out. Nezu interjected Madraya then went on to explain what happened in detail to the teachers. That would explain many things. Recovery girl said are you thinking what I'm thinking? All Might asked looking over to the old lady recovery girl nodded and looked over at Madraya. Madraya how do you feel? Any problems ever since this happened? Recovery girl asked I hear voices in my head and I've been getting headaches as of late, Midraya explained. You see young Midraya, recovery girl and I had this theory about all for one and his quirk. All Might said Midraya had some theories of his own but now that it was up in the air he spoke up. It's too much. Midraya said in a low voice what was that Midraya? Nezu asked with curiosity I mean it's too much for one person to handle so many quirks. Midraya said as he, walked over to a nearby whiteboard and pulled out a marker think about it. Totoraki has trouble mastering even two quirks and I had to train extensively just to control mine. All for one's mind shouldn't be able to sustain the raw amount of data all these quirks have in his mind. Midraya explained as he began to draw human bodies on the board All Might and Recovery Girl looked at each other and, back at the board. So what are you getting at? Aizawa asked he should be insane or a vegetable by now with all the quirks he has to remember. I can tap into all for one for a minute but the data is so much it hurts to even use it. I feel the reason I'm not in a hospital bed strapped to life support is because I don't know how many quirks are stored yet. Midraya added as he pointed at his head, Midraya you mentioned voices earlier, what do they say? Nezu asked a skinny man explained the quirk to some extent but nothing that we didn't already know. The whispers all say many things, most of it just bits and pieces of their memories but they do seem to have some sort of collective consciousness. This topic however has them all saying one phrase to me. Midraya explained well. Azawa, asked T take and destroy. The voices whispered in unison take and destroy. Midraya said the room fell silent and Nezu spoke up. That can mean many things but for now Madraya please refrain from using that quirk until we know more. Nezu added oh, one more think a new take and return quirks? Recover girl asked I'm not sure I don't have a way of testing it. Midraya replied let's do it, now then. Azawa added Azawa are you sure about this? All Might asked Ye if he can take it then he can give it back. Azawa replied quickly everyone in the room turned to look at Nezu for approval. Nezu nodded and let them proceed ready. Midraya asked Ye. Azawa replied Midraya closed his eyes and took a deep breath. The whispers Midraya grunted nothing was happening expect, Midraya almost falling over from the pain in his head. Okay, I'm ready. Midraya said as he placed his hand on Azawa's head do it. Azawa reassured Midraya Midraya placed his hand on Azawa's head for a few seconds before pulling away. Ok now let's test it. Midraya make some wind come out of your palms. All Might added quickly Midraya nodded and the loose papers in the room began to fly, all over. Azawa. Try to erase his quirk. All Might said loudly Azawa looked at Midraya and erased his quirk with ease and Midraya fell to the ground as all for one was shut down by force. I couldn't take his quirk. Midraya said catching his breath the room felt relieved and worried at the same time Midraya couldn't steal Azawa's quirk. Well, let's call it day for now and take things, slow. Nezu said sir what do I tell the students regarding Midraya? Azawa asked Nezu the room was silent and the brainstorming began. I can't think of a believable excuse. Recovery girl said rubbing her chin maybe make an excuse that he manifested his quirk during battle? All Might suggested that won't make sense. There are no cases with that happening. Azawa added with a sigh I hate to do this but how about we tell a half lie to everyone? Nezu suggested how so? Midraya asked well how about we say all for one gave you a quirk but it was dormant until now. 
It makes some sense and no one knows how the quirk actually works so there is no way to confirm it either. Nezu explained as he looked over to Madrai yeah I think that's the best it's going to get Aizawa said as he, scratched the back of his head I agree. Midraya added everyone nodded and went with that life for the time being before going back to work. Midraya and Aizawa were walking back to class when Midraya spoke up. Well let's hope this doesn't blow up in our faces. Midraya said as he let out a yawn same here. Aizawa replied as he put on some eye drops. Back in class one other class was whispering about Midraya's display at the training ground when Aizawa walked into the classroom followed by Midraya. Kaminari was about to ask when Aizawa spoke up. Before you all ask, I will let Madraya explain something first. Aizawa said loudly the League of Villains leader had given me a quirk but it never manifested until today's training. I don't know why or how because his quirk is a mystery in, itself. Madraya lied to his class Madraya felt bad about abusing the trust his class had in him but this was for the best. So what quirk do you have? Kaminari asked I'm not sure what it is. Midraya replied Midraya is going to have some physical tests done for now. Aizawa added the class agreed that asking questions now will just lead to more questions and let it go. Now he's super, strong. Kirishima said shifting the class's mood alright all of you. Class is dismissed early today so go and enjoy your afternoon. Aizawa said dismissing the class most of the students left except for a select few still packing up. Hey! Mina said tapping Madraya's shoulder hello Mina. Madraya said turning around so you've got a quirk now huh Mina said with a smile I suppose I do. Madraya replied well you better go easy on us okay Mina said sticking out her tongue playfully before leaving you know that's not my style Mina. Madraya replied with a smile that night in Hazu. Midraya was on top of a building getting some fresh air when he heard a commotion nearby. I'll never do it again. The man said as he ran away with a bloodied face a masked man with blades, simply ignored the criminal and picked up a nearby purse. Here you go. The masked man said handing the purse over to a senior thank you. Hey you're Stendhal right that new vigilante? The old woman asked yes. Stendhal said before disappearing into the darkness of the alley Stendhal? A cop he cat or is this him? Midraya thought as he watched Stendhal disappear Midraya was well known amongst the heroes and still had a large bounty on his head because of pro hero hawks. The league was also in hiding and Midraya had taken the liberty of digging into all the members past so stain why the change of pace. Midraya asked out loud how do you know I wasn't a copycat? Stain asked a cop he cat isn't as good. Midraya replied calmly you know I'm not sure how long I can keep this up kid. This, facade of no violence and the vigilante gig isn't really helping. So do me a solid. Stain said as he walked up next to Midraya what can I do? Midraya asked I'm sure you have an idea. It's the only way we'll go down and you know it Stain said as he pulled out his knife Stain dashed toward Midraya and pushed him off the building while jumping after him. Slaughter's vigilance Midraya used his gauntlet to land onto the street and Stain followed right behind. Whoa look it's Hope and Stendhal going at it. A civilian shouted nearby Midraya knew that Stain wasn't going to use his quirk so they could have one final fight. I'm doing this for me. Stain said as he swung at Midraya and missed I know. Midraya said as he kicked Stain in the stomach Midraya knew Stain was doing this so, Midraya could put him in jail but to also get one last fight with his student before going. You were such a wimp back in the day. Stain said as he clashed with Midraya yeah well, this wimp can beat you with ease now. Midraya replied as he pushed Stain back I remember when I picked you up from the alley your eyes were full of life. Stain said as he ran towards Midraya with his sword, Midraya used his gauntlet to block and created some distance between himself and Stain. But when I finished training you, I saw nothing in those eyes anymore, just a lifeless shell of a boy the world once knew and I hated myself for that. I could have done things differently. Stain said as he lowered his weapon now that I look at you however I can see some life back in those eyes. Stain added. As he pulled out a small knife Stain threw a blade so fast no one normal could keep up but Midraya caught the knife and threw it back. 
Midraya ran towards Stain following behind the knife. Don't be so hard on yourself. Midraya said as he dashed towards Stain he surpassed me. Stain thought as he faced an unavoidable attack the difference in ability was far too great now that Midraya could be Stain with little effort. Stain had no choice but to catch the knife and be defeated by Midraya. There was no other way to avoid what was coming. One for the road. Midraya shouted as he punched Stain in the stomach knocking the wind out of him. Midraya stood over Stain, Stendhalin for once he didn't know what to do. I'm proud of you and I'm honored to have trained you. Stain said in, between breaths settled down, it's not like you're going to die. Midraya chuckled as he offered his hand to Stain no. I want this, I did this for you and for myself. Stain said looking up at the night sky me. What do you mean? Midraya asked confused Midraya was at a loss of words, Stain a bloodthirster killer wished to be in prison. I realized watching you work as the vigilante that people deserve second chances. I don't want you to be shackled to me or anyone kid. Stain explained the police sirens could be heard approaching in the distance. You go and be what you want to be. A hero or villain. Hell you could become a stay-at-home dad for all I care and leave all this behind. Just live and become what you want. Stain said as he exhaled calmly maybe I'll see you around when you've served your lifetimes. Midraya said as he started to walk away you go live here as kid. Stain said as he looked at the cloudy night sky Midraya went back to U.A. early that night with those words in his head. The next morning. Midraya had a lot on his mind after last night and the Liberation Army wasn't making things easy either. The Liberation Army was making some moves in the shadows but Midraya wasn't going to intervene unless he had to. Hey! Azawa called out to Midraya meet me in the nurse's office Midraya. Azawa said calmly I'll be there. Midraya replied as he came back to reality I wonder what's the problem now. Midraya thought as he made his way to recovery girl's office. In recovery girl's office. Midraya opened the door and saw recovery girl and Azawa having a conversation. Close the door sweetie. Recovery girl said with a smile so what's this about? Midraya asked as he walked inside just a few questions for you Midraya recovery girl said with a smile how are the whispers doing? Aizawa asked picking up a clipboard and pen there are moments when they get restless and just make my head hurt but I'm learning to live with them. Midraya answered when was the last time you used the all for one quirk? Recovery girl asked in principal Niza's office during our test. Midraya replied Midraya was confused why she was asking such simple questions out of the blue. And one more question what do you think about your vigilante status? Aizawa asked as a smile grew across his face pop the sound of a party cracker went off and Nezu appeared out from under the bed and All Might came walking in with a present what's this? Midraya asked Aizawa oh, don't be so down party boy. It's your party for serving your jail time. Aizawa said yes, Aizawa said you liked surprises. Nezu said with a pure smile you served your jail time and have contributed to society enough to be set free. Nezu added ah what the hell. Midraya thought as he enjoyed the party that was thrown for him. So what now? Midraya asked Nezu well you no longer have to go outside and do vigilante work. You also no longer have to teach here but we do recommend you stay with us. Nezu explained you're just a civilian now. How boring Aizawa teased well sweetie, do what you wish. I know you're not a bad person and I am certain this is the start of a new chapter in your life. Recovery girl said as she handed Midraya some cake All Might stood up and prepared a toast. To Midraya and his new start. All Might said raising a cup Midraya was unsure how to feel but those words struck just right thank you. Midraya said raising his cup the group drank their drinks and All Might pulled out his present Midraya this is for you. All Might said as he handed, Midraya the wrapped present it better not be an All Might action figure Midraya said with a chuckle I feel this is something you needed long ago but I think even now this is just what you need. All Might explained Midraya looked down at his present and opened it up. I believe you can become whatever you want to be Midraya. Tasha or Ayagi All Might switched into his butt form and, begged Midraya for forgiveness I'm sorry. 
I was wrong that day and I regret my decision every day but I know from here on out you will be assigned to see All Might said the room fell silent and All Might realized a drop of water fell in front of him. Midraya eyes were watery and tears rolled down his cheeks. The words he wanted to hear when he was in middle school and on the rooftop. Sure, it's different where you're free. Midraya said with a laugh please get up. Midraya said All Might got up and looked towards Midraya thank you All Might. I forgive you Midraya said with a smile All Might felt a wave of relief come over him and his guilt was washed away. Midraya we want you at this school and not just because we think it would be safer but because we also strongly believe, you can become someone amazing. Nezu said so what do you think villain kid, oops I mean kid Aizawa said teasing Midraya Midraya looked around and thought of his students. Look closer at the box All Might gave you. Nezu said with a smile Midraya looked closer and pulled out a sheet of paper. We thought jumping the gun and making you a hero wasn't the shortcut you would want, so this is, also on the table if you want it. Nezu said you dot a transfer student form as Yuku Midraya transferred to class 1A Midraya looked at the paper and back at everyone else in the room. I'm good. Midraya said the room was caught off guard and Midraya laughed. You should see the look on your faces. Midraya said laughing where do I sign? Midraya added with a smile Nezu got Midraya's signature, and stamped the form. Welcome to you. A is Yuku Midraya. Nezu said with a smile the room was clapping even Aizawa who was visibly happy so you're all my senseis now. Quite a step down. Midraya said with a sigh about that Midraya. You're still going to teach. Aizawa said so double the work then? Midraya said with a sigh good luck young Midraya. All Might said feeling sorry in a joking way, oh hush he will do just fine. Recovery girl added all sales are final Midraya. Oh, and if you're wondering about the vigilante status I think he'll leave that up to you from now on. Nezu explained well kid, let's see what you can do. Aizawa said with a smile. Chapter 26. Class 1A was surprised to see Midraya running late to class. Sensei where is Diku? Your Araka asked yes, it is not like him to be late. Tenya added the class murmuring when Aizawa finally spoke up. Settled down. First things first. Midraya will no longer be a teacher. Aizawa sighed in his usually groggy voice what why? Mina said loudly not cool man. Kaminari said bummed out the class was in an uproar. Oh, he's here. Aizawa announced as the door slowly opened Midraya is now also a student of you. A. Aizawa said as Midraya stepped in this was the biggest surprise to ever happen to class 1A, even Rikigu was surprised. My name is Midraya is Yuku, please treat me well. Midraya said introducing himself to the class Midraya was in the U.A uniform but his face was still as lifeless as ever. Midraya is now your classmate but he is still your sensei so please go to him for advice if you ever, need it. Aizawa explained what brought this change? Totoraki asked well with this quirk that manifested I think the best way to control it would be to take classes and learn alongside you all. I may be behind but I hope to catch up. Midraya replied alright now we're on the same playing field. Kirishima said fired up the class was in very high spirits after hearing the news. Well, Midraya take your seat and come up to the board when it's time for you to teach. Aizawa said later that day. Midraya was going to take the physical exam so they can determine what Midraya needs to work on. Well now that you're a student, we need to put you through the physical exam Midraya. Aizawa said that fair. Midraya replied the rest of you have the rest of the day off. Aizawa, announced Midraya went to the changing rooms and got ready to take the physical. A few minutes later, some of the class 1A students were eavesdropping on Midraya's physical exam to see how he would fare. All right now for the throwing test. Aizawa said as he picked up a metal ball you know they're watching right. Midraya said in a low voice, yay so try and be normal. Aizawa replied as, he handed the ball over Midraya's results were average since he didn't use any quirks but he did better than some students. How about you try and get close to your class as a student for now? Aizawa said walking to the dorms with Midraya I was wondering do I need to take all the tests to get a provisional license? 
Midraya asked showing his laziness I never thought about that, I'll speak to, the principal later but I'm sure he has a loophole to save us the time. Aizawa said as he made his way to Nezu's office. Midraya changed and made his way back downstairs to get some food when he heard his classmates talking. Do you guys think he will do it? Kirishima asked maybe but I wouldn't push it. Totoraki added well, I'm going to ask him. Mina said with confidence ask who, what? Midraya said out of nowhere eep. Mina squealed in surprise I'm not going to ask him. Kirishima said taking a sip of his juice I'm too shy to ask. Yoraraka said Midraya was confused at the current situation unfolding before him. Midraya we. We want to see your room. Mina said as she shut her eyes expecting a cold hard no sure. Midraya said calmly as he took a bite of his bread, eh? The class said in unison yes, you can look if you're that interested. Midraya added alright that's the spirit. Kirishima said loudly I bet he's hiding some magazines. Mineta said to the class I wonder what darkness awaits us. Tokoyami said Deku's room. Yoraraka said kind of nervous well, let's go. Mina announced to the class Madraya led the way to his room and everyone quickly, followed behind even Bakugu who was in the back. Okay here is my room. Midraya said as he slowly began to open the door everyone had a look of curiosity but it quickly switched to confusion in the blink of an eye. Wait wait wait, that's it? Jiro said breaking the silence, yay just an average room. Midraya said taking a seat on his office chair huh well, that's that mystery solved. Momo said with a chuckle needless to say. The night ended anticlimactically in the 1A dorms. The next day around 7 p.m. It was a day for relaxation but something was nagging at Madraya. The league had been quiet for way too long and the Liberation Army was also beginning to move in the shadows. There he is. Midraya whispered as he spotted the man he was looking for Spinner was sneaking around in alleys and speaking to shady people, for the league. So you wanna join? Spinner asked the man and work with your psycho leader? No thanks. The man replied bluntly Madraya had been watching Spinner to see if he could follow him back to Shigaraki but it wouldn't come to pass. Hey, how long are you going to follow me? Spinner asked loudly. Midraya came down from the roof of a building and met I too I with Spinner. You got me. Midraya said with his voice changer so your hope huh? Spinner said as he eyed Midraya. Midraya stayed silent and began to think of a way to get the info he wanted without any bloodshed. Are you looking for a fight? I heard you were the one who took out Stain. Spinner asked taking a step forward no. Just wanted to know what the league is up to so I stay out of your way and to answer, your second question, yes I did take out Stain. Midraya replied Spinner eyed Midraya and then threw a blade in his direction. Midraya caught the blade with ease and got ready to fight. HMPH. I guess that's why you got the jump on Stain. Okay, I'm going to throw you a bone only because Stain had mentioned you as a worthy vigilante. Spinner sighed in an annoyance just don't want any trouble with the league. Midraya said as he rubbed the back of his neck and tossed Spinner back his knife. Midraya was cunning when it came to talking to certain people and Spinner's obsession with Stain would open up a topic that could lead to indirect information on the league's plans. Stain wouldn't like the way they are running things over there. I mean what some random guys show up and the whole thing just gets complicated you know. Spinner said with a frustrated groan must be a pain working with those guys I bet. Midraya said you wouldn't believe. Alright stay out of Deika City if you want to live. Spinner said before walking away. Deika City? The people who follow the Liberation Army reside there. Midraya said as he grappled from building to building Midraya, was worried about the disaster that could unfold and its casualties due to the owner of Dutnarat a major influencer in Deika City. In Deika City. Midraya was surveying the lively city and watched as several civilians use their quirks in public. Where is he? Redistro. Midraya thought as he looked around the city Midraya was about to call it a night when he finally spotted the man he was looking for. Rikia was surrounded by many fans who wanted a photo. It seems we are being followed Gaiden. 
Rikiyo said to his bodyguard who was wearing a large parka coat What should we do Grand Commander? Gaten asked Midraya knew if he snuck up on Rikiyo things would turn sour quick. Midraya grappled down and made his way over to Rikiyo calmly. The vigilante hope. What a surprise to see, you in our city. Rikiyo said with a smile some civilians looked over at Midraya and whispered about his deeds. He is liberated. A man whispered what do you need? Gaten asked sternly as he prepared himself for a fight I came to talk. Midraya said to Rikiyo ah, I see. Well, come to my building it's right up ahead. Rikiyo said as he led the way in the Dinarat building. Midraya was, sitting across from Rikiyo and Gaten stood behind with his arms crossed. A drink? Rikiyo asked as he poured himself a glass of wine no I think I'm good, listen I came here to talk that's all. Midraya said as he tossed over photos to Rikiyo the photos contained pictures of members of the Liberation Army. I know what your company truly is. Midraya said menacingly Gaten seemed agitated at that comment but Rikiyo simply sighed and took a long sip of his wine. Why don't you join us Hope? We could find a very nice spot for you here and it's not like you're any different from us, using your quirk illegally. Rikiyo said as he set down his glass and picked up the photos you have an entire city under your thumb, all willing to die for something so meaningless as a quirk. Madraya, replied Rikiyo was admiring the notes Madraya had written on the photos. He got all their names and quirks abilities without me even noticing. Rikiyo thought as he looked up at Madraya well, what do you want from me to David Vigilante Hope? Rikiyo asked I don't know what you and the League of Villains are planning on doing but pull out of this race, you're not going to win. Madraya, explained you do know your stuff Hope but I think it's far too late for that. Rikiyo said as he signaled Gaten to bring him something we believe in the liberation of quirks you see and some sacrifices need to be made so we can achieve this liberation. Rikiya explained as Gaten returned along with Grun the League's broker Madraya rubbed his forehead in frustration and better understood the situation now. What you work for them too Vigi? Grun asked as he spit out some blood in Midraya's direction it's already too late then. I'll be taking my leave. Midraya said calmly as he walked toward the elevator Rikiyo took another sip of his wine and watched Midraya walk toward the elevator rest assured hope we will not lose. Rikiyo said confidently Madraya knew how strong Rikiyo was, and the Liberation Army's members but Madraya still had his doubts. The next morning, Madraya got up early to train with All Might in a wooded area of U.A to focus on his strengthened air cannon and increase its firepower. You're progressing very fast Madraya. All Might said as he handed the boy a water bottle this power of mine is a part of me now but I'm reluctant to use it most of the time. Midraya replied as he waved his hand and a large gust of wind shook the surrounding trees it is a burden at times to carry something so strong. All Might said as he looked down at his hands how is Mirio? Midraya asked as he took a sip of his water ever since his quirk got erased he's been focusing on one for all and can now control up to 65% for a short amount of time All Might. Explained last time I checked I could control just enough so I don't break any bones. Midraya said showing his new scars to all my nasty scars compared to Mirio's, maybe because of the multiple quirks? Well, for now, follow me and let's see the fruits of your training. All Might said as he led the way. All Might had asked Nezu to use of the large practice areas to test Midraya's quirks without having to worry about nearby facilities. All right show me what you've got. All Might shouted in the distance Madraya looked ahead at a large body of water that was used to teach students how to use their quirks in a body of water. Let's see how much I can handle. Madraya thought as he readied his punch Madraya threw his punch and watched as the pool of water in front of him, split in half showing the bottom and the entire building shook. Whoa! All Might said surprised that's not like last time. Midraya said as he looked down at his arm in a mix of fear and confusion All Might ran up to Midraya excited and surprised. Well, that's certainly something. I think if we keep at it like this you will have full control of those quirks in no time. All Might explained, with a smile I hope so. Midraya thought as he followed All Might back. Midraya was walking to his room when Aizawa got his attention. 
Midraya go to the support department and get your costume. It's about time you met the people over at the support department. Azawa explained I'll head over now Azawa. Midraya said Tenya, Mina, and Uraraka were also going to the support department, to get some gadgets for their costumes. Is this it? Midraya asked himself as he looked down at the map of the school oh, Midraya. Mina shouted from the end of the hallway Iku. Uraraka said with a smile Midraya here to get your costume? Tenya asked walking up yes I was told to come and pick it you Madraya was about to say when an explosion interrupted him wa Madraya are you okay? Mina asked as she swatted away the smoke Deku are you hurt? Uraraka said as she looked for Madraya the smoke slowly cleared and Madraya was laying on the ground with a pink haired girl on top of him. Tenya let out a sigh of relief but Mina and Uraraka's face flushed as they saw Madraya under the girl. Oh, are you that ex-villain? Sorry, I couldn't meet you sooner but I was busy with my, babies. The pink haired girl said pressing herself closer to Madraya nice to meet you. Can you please get off me miss? Madraya greeted calmly my Hatsum at your service. Hatsum said with a big smile as she stood up Hatsum was covered in oil and dirt and her yellow eyes were fixated on Madraya. Nice to meet you. Madraya said as he got up Oi Hatsum don't be putting random things, together. Pro Hero Power Loader said as he swatted away the remaining smoke there was a pause when Power Loader saw the visitors. We are here for equipment Hatsum and Power Loader. Tenya shouted with enthusiasm hello, Hatsum. Uraraka said with a smile Madraya was already observing at all the inventions in the room when Power Loader came up to him. Hey sorry about earlier. Power Loader said apologizing it's okay. I'm impressed with this room. Midraya said that's nothing, see that big pile of junk over there? Those are all of Hatsum's inventions that either blew up or caught fire. Power Loader said pointing at a large pile Hatsum was giving suggestions and wacky items to the other students, especially Tenya who had a close relationship with my since the sports festival. I can tell she likes her work, Datezawa told me to come and pick up something. Midraya said as he handed Power Loader a note to oh, Yay come over here. Power loader signaling Madraya over to his desk the pro hero pulled out a heavy suitcase and handed it over to Madraya. I made some adjustments to your items but everything you used before should be in there, minus the knife. I also added some extra toys as per Azawa's request so make sure to look over these notes carefully Power loader explained as he handed Madraya a two page folder with changes and instructions to his outfit thank you will make sure to read it carefully. Madraya said as he received his case Madraya had what he came for and made his way back to his room so he could check out his new costume. Now let's see what we have here. Midraya said as he opened the large case and spread out all of the items on his bed all right, your support items were very bulky so I took the liberty to make them smaller and more accessible for you. Your flashbangs are those large red marbles, press the button and it will start the countdown. Your blades were taken out but I've replaced it with hyper density seals like Azawa suggested enter. Smoke bombs are the large grey marbles that explode on impact once the button is pressed. Midraya looked at his new improved items and kept reading the notes. All right now the fun part. Okay, your costume was pretty well made but there is always room for improvement. I took the liberty of changing the fibers to better resist fire and it should be easier to swim in water. Your colors are very depressing but I know you used black to hide in the dark so I've stayed true to the design but lightened up the color to a dark gray. Azawa had your gloves, mask and footwear built by someone else so I can't help with that sorry. Midraya's shoes and mask were from his vigilante costume but with a different design to match his costume and its colors. The gauntlets were the vigilante hopes, signature movement and if anyone saw Midraya using the gloves in the same fashion it wouldn't be hard to put two and two together. The gloves were now just meant to handle his air cannon quirk, the grappling hooks were gone. Not bad. Midraya said as he began to place everything back into the large case back in Dika City. Rikia looked out of his office window at the city below him and placed his thumb on his forehead making the Liberation Army symbol. Tomorrow it begins. Rikia said with a smile. 
Chapter 27 Midraya was in his room wondering if he should tell Nezu or Rezao about the fight to come to Dika city. I need to find a way to minimize casualties. Midraya said as he spread out his vigilante costume and you all should let me think for myself. Midraya whispered, in annoyance dangerous. Too dangerous. A whisper said quickly let them kill each other. Fewer enemies are better another whisper said that's not the point. Midraya said as he laid back on his bed after taking a pill for his headache Midraya now had a better understanding of the whispers since he last went berserk at the training site. The whispers were all remnants of what was left behind, of the user but some previous victims are still alive and their thoughts still reside within the quirk for mysterious reasons. The whispers all began to argue until Midraya spoke up. Just shut up and let me sleep. Midraya said angrily as he set up decision. Make a decision. The whisper said in unison before going quiet. Finally. Midraya said as he shut his eyes and went to sleep a few hours later. Midraya sat up from his bed with a yawn and walked over to his closet. Midraya was trying his best to reach Dika city as fast as possible but grappling can only get you so far, it was going to take 30 minutes at least. Please don't be late. Midraya said to himself as he swung from building to building back at you. A Midraya is on the movement towards Dika City, no less. Nezu said as he turned the monitor to Azawa I know we had some intel about a brawl breaking out soon with the Ligon Deliberation Army but it wasn't enough to act on. Azawa said as he stared at the monitor with Nezu well if Midraya is heading over it's safe to assume the intel was correct. I have faith that he will do the right thing in Dika City. Nezu said as he looked over, at the monitor once more let's hope this doesn't end with him dead. Azawa said as he walked back to his office I'll keep you posted Nezu said as Azawa headed out the door I can't lose another one. Azawa sighed as he remembered an old friend in Dika City. Midraya arrived just in time as he saw the League beginning to fight with the Liberation Army. Take and destroy. Free us. The whispers said just be quiet. Midraya said as he ran toward the fight loud bangs could be heard in different parts of the city as the league engaged with the Liberation Army. Midraya wasn't there to participate, instead, he was there to try and minimize casualties. Just why the ID you fall into madness? Curious shouted Midraya was watching the fight from a roof nearby as to not be seen. Tolga seemed pretty beat up. Curious is one of the executives of the army. Midraya thought as he stared at the pale blue woman what exactly is a normal life. Toga replied with a big smile. Midraya had dug into all of their backgrounds but Toga's was the easiest to find surprisingly. Her situation was on the news everywhere a few years back. Toga was out of energy and was on Curious lap, hearing her talk about her past. Forced to the norms of this world Curious was saying before she was interrupted by Toga shut up. Toga shouted Toga tried to stab Curious but to no avail as Curious used her support item and punched Toga in the face. You will become a martyr for our cause him eco Toga. Curious said as he looked at the bloodied teenage girl Toga slipped out of the woman's arms, and began to run away in the other direction and took a drop of Uraraka's blood to transform. What? Why now? Midraya asked himself as he observed the desperate girl you can only change appearance and that's all. I guess you want to go out looking cute how adorable. Curious said as she caught up to Toga and prepared to finish her off na oooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooo
Midraya said in a menacing voice the group gulped and stood down after that. Midraya grappled onto a nearby roof and tried to look for Togadam lost her. Midraya said frustrated Midraya jumped around trying to minimize casualties anywhere he can until he ran into Dobby. So, you're here. Dobby said walking up to Midraya you guys don't care how many people you killed you? Midraya said staring down the scar teen it's kill or be killed here. Should I lay on my back and die? Dobby shouted as he shot a fire blast towards Midraya Midraya dodged and dashed towards Dobby. Not so fast. Dobby said as he shot a full blast of fire at Midraya the fire connect and Dobby tried to catch his breath but Midraya appeared from the fire and revved up his punch at Dobby's stomach. Shit he's going to knock me out. Dobby thought as he tripped backward with this, I can capture at least him. Midraya said as he about to knock out Dobby but was interrupted by a large wave of ice Midraya took a direct hit and went sent flying to another street towards the center. He's my, prey. Gaten said as he looked down at Dobby from his ice platform ice hunt a strong one to boot. Dobby said as he got up from the ground and looked up at Gaten Midraya shifted his body in midair and grappled to a nearby building. Damn it. Midraya said frustrated as he punched the ground the battle between Gaten and Dobby began and Midraya had a feeling that he had long forgotten. I feel, useless. Midraya said with a sigh as watched crowds of people die at the hands of the leak. Midraya sat and watched until he saw Spinner and Shigaraki of all people fighting a crowd. Revenge for Curious. The large crowd of people shouted as they rushed toward Shigaraki I'm in the worst possible mood. Shigaraki said as he disintegrated the entire group in an instant Midraya eyes shot wide, open and instantly dashed toward Shigaraki at high speed without even thinking. Kill him. The whispers shouted in unison if I tease just him and only him. I can't allow him to live any longer. Midraya said as he prepared to lose his entire arm to kill Shigaraki in one punch Midraya closed the distance unnoticed and prepared to kill Shigaraki when a familiar voice stopped him and his body causing him to crash land on a roof. Not, so fast boy. All for one said with a chuckle Madraya's body felt like it was under intense gravity grr Madraya growled as he tried to lift himself off the ground I can't have you killing my successor like that. I do have to say your intent to kill was so strong even I felt it from here all for one said laughing I'll be going now. All for one said Shigaraki and Spinner were now gone from. The vicinity leaving only Midraya to watch as countless civilians died for a cause that had no future. Frustrated. So close. The voices said angrily use us and finish this now. The voices said angrily shut up. Let me think for myself please. Midraya replied Midraya no longer felt the huge weight on his body and got up from the roof. That's not good. Midraya said as he watched an army. Of clones made by twice filling the city the clones were killing anyone in their way and Midraya was no exception. Get him. The clone said in unison as they began to attack Midraya wait this is perfect? Midraya thought as he began to flee a large number of clones began to chase Midraya as he fled and many other clones quickly followed as well. You can't run away forever. The clones, said I know. Midraya replied as he looked at a literal wave of clones about to crash onto him air cannon Midraya lifted his arm and punched in the direction of the clones destroying all of them in one punch. Although there were thousands still running around, Midraya was able to destroy a significant amount before any more people were hurt. The liberation began to retreat and Midraya let out, a sigh of relief until a large boom could be heard nearby. What in God's name is Midraya said as he watched a large beast destroy everything in its path Midraya snapped out of his haze and remembered something all for one had kept hidden from the league but after some digging Midraya had found a code name for something. Gigantomica. Midraya said in a low voice the fight raged on as Gaiden was no longer battling Dobby but Gigantomica. Master's successor Gigantomica shouted as he plowed his way through civilians in buildings I can't beat that thing. Midraya said and defeat retreat. Another day. The voices said Midraya hated to fail but the death toll was already amongst hundreds maybe even thousands and fighting now will only make that number climb even more. Damn it, 
Midraya said as he retreated to U.A and defeat back at U.A high. Midraya was in his bed staring at the ceiling but images of people being torn apart and killed were flashing in his head. Damn. Midraya sighed as he pulled out his phone to see the news when a knock was at his door Midraya opened the door to reveal Azawa with Nezu at his side. We need to talk. Azawa said to Midraya, yeah sure. Midraya said as he put on a sweater before heading out back in Nezu's office Aizawa was pulling out some papers when Nezu spoke up. We know about Dika City and your involvement. Nezu said you can't save them all Midraya, don't let the number phase you. Aizawa added I know. Midraya replied in a depressed tone Midraya I called you here to discuss your upcoming internship. We, both know you are highly trained but I think you can still learn a thing or two from others. Nezu explained in a few days the students will all go train under someone, please consider doing the same. Aizawa said handing Midraya a list of heroes I don't think any of them will accept me. Midraya replied I'll make sure that they do and don't worry about our public image for now Midraya, Nezu said with a smile I'll think about it. Midraya said before leaving the office and going back to his room I'm a bit worried about tomorrow. Aizawa said the interview will go well I just know it. Nezu said with glee. Midraya was in his room working when he heard a knock on his door. Yes. Midraya asked as he opened the door Hey Mina said with a cute smile Hi Mina. Midraya, greeted the pink girl so some of us were thinking of having a little picnic outside in a bit would you like to come? Mina asked fully prepared to be rejected there was a pause and Midraya looked at the paperwork on his desk and let out a sigh. Sure. Midraya said it's okay I underweight really? Mina said surprised yeah I'll meet you downstairs. Midraya said before closing the door Mina, began to make her way back to the stairs but not before looking back at Midraya's door with a warm smile. The next day. Aizawa was in the staff room with Midraya working on lesson plans when the silence was broken by Nezu. Midraya good morning. Nezu said with energy oh, good morning principal. Midraya said bowing before the mouse morning principal Aizawa greeted the students would, all be getting interviewed today in the afternoon including Midraya. So as you know Midraya your status as a hero has been kept secret for various reasons but today we will go public. Nezu explained handing Midraya a statement by you. Hey so try not to act like a demon on camera yay? Aizawa said teasing Midraya very funny red eye. Midraya said with a comeback of his own I think your change, from villain to a student will show the world that good can prevail. Nezu said with a smile so what do I say? Midraya asked we want the interview to go as smoothly as possible but genuine. Aizawa added Midraya be sure to be yourself and show the world that even a quirkless boy can be a hero. Nezu said as he raised both arms in the air what about my quirks and the incident with all four, one? Class 1A and Class 1B know I have something. Midraya asked about that Midraya, we talked with all the students and told them to keep their lips sealed on that incident. As of now, only the class knows about that but the world will know the real you. Aizawa explained to Midraya what could go wrong right? Midraya said with a short chuckle a few minutes later. Midraya was waiting, for the reporters to finish interviewing Totoraki and Bakugu. Nervous? Aizawa asked with a protein bag in hand not really but I am prepared to hear some questions regarding my past. Midraya replied Aizawa was about to say something when Midraya's time came up to be interviewed by the woman. Hello can you tell us your name? The woman asked Midraya is Yuku Midraya. Midraya replied ever, since Midraya had entered Yudata's name had been leaked several times to the public but thankfully there were no repercussions. Everyone is worried that you are just acting to get the trust of the heroes for a master plan in the future. The woman said no matter what I say no one will believe me but if it makes anyone feel better, no I'm not planning something against the heroes. Madraya, answered calmly I see well that's good to hear. The woman said with a smile the woman flipped through her notes and found a good question to ask Madraya. Now that you are a student of U.A what do you think your hero name will be when you hopefully graduate? The woman asked I haven't put much thought into it but I think he'll go by my last name or. Midraya said before pausing or? 
The woman, said I might go by my old villain name and clear its name. Midraya said to the newswoman, ah, I think that's amazing. Okay, last question, your classmates are blessed with such powerful quirks and you being quirkless have to keep up, what is your plan for the future? The woman asked as she leaned in I am quirkless but if you look at pro hero eraser head does not have a flashy quirk but he, makes the most of what he has. I will make the most of support items and make up for my lack of a quirk. Midraya explained that's a good answer, thank you for the interview Midraya. The woman said standing up and bowing thank you for having me. Midraya said bowing back. I still can't believe he became a student. The cameraman said me neither but we got lucky with this interview. The woman replied Azawa walked up to Midraya and handed him a cup of tea and a protein bar. You look like shit. Azawa chuckled is it that obvious? Midraya sighed as he took a bite of the bar now but I know a thing or two about these kinds of things. Azawa explained so now what? Midraya asked well, now you go with the rest of the students and do interview practice with them. Try to, be involved a bit more. Azawa said as he sat down on a chair alright, I'm on my way then. Midraya said as he began to leave until Azawa spoke up wait Mount Lady is going to be there and I'm pretty sure she knows about your past. I'm tagging along so she doesn't cause a scene. Azawa said as he got up from the chair yeah that mess in Kamino was bad. Midraya said with a sigh Midraya and, Azawa soon made their way towards the rest of the students. You all nailed it. Mount Lady said praising the students I don't say half-assed things. Shut up and follow me. Bukagu shouted into the camera you need to get along better with the rest of humanity. Said Midraya arrived with Aizawa but the class was too entertained by Bukagu and I think you are going to avoid the camera like Aizawa, does Midraya. Midnight said to Midraya I'm no good around cameras or the spotlight. Midraya replied okay and is that everyone? Asked as she looked around we have one more. Midnight said pulling Madraya next to her chest Madraya showed no reaction as usual but Mount Lady quickly went on the defense after seeing Madraya next to Midnight. You're the villain boy from Camino. Said it's good, to see you. Midraya greeted Midraya is a student now and on his way to becoming a hero. Today is the day we tell the world about our new student. Azawa explained the class was excited to hear the news on Midraya and his status as a student. Yay finally Mina said with a smile can't wait to see that segment on the coup today. Your Araka said full of excitement it's about time. Totoraki said, come up here then I suppose, Mount Lady said begrudgingly thank you for having me. Midraya said taking the stage with first off show us your super move. Mount Lady said sternly I don't have one I'm sorry. Midraya replied you're going to be a hero but you don't even have a super move. Mount Lady said with a scoff I'm quirkless so I can't have one. Midraya said well you have to show me something. Come at me and pin me, down if you can. Mount Lady said taking a fighting stance Midraya looked over at Aizawa but only to see a man curled up in his sleeping bag. Here I come. Midraya said vigilant sex slaughter Midraya shot towards and pinned her down in an instant without giving her a chance to react. GRR. Mount Lady growled and began to grow slightly that's enough. Aizawa said erasing her quirk HMPF well that's, not so bad. Mount Lady said dusting herself off it's still amazing to see someone move like that. Tokoyami said without a quirk too. Kaminari added so you're going to rely on support items then. Mount Lady asked yes. Midraya replied okay well pretend you just defeated a villain and they ask you about the future. Mount Lady said there was a pause and everyone grew silent waiting for Midraya's, response. I'll try my best for what's to come. Midraya said with cold confidence well it's not bad. Mount Lady said annoyed the line of someone who is fully prepared to embrace the future. Aizawa thought as he looked at the once suicidal boy now anxious for the future ahead of him so manly Kirishima said with its air well done Midraya. Tenya said enthusiastically that night. Midraya sat at the edge of a tall building taking in the cold air and thinking of what Totoraki told him and Bakugu. Want to join me at Endeavor's office for our internships? Totoraki asked what to do. 
Midraya said as he looked down at the street below Midraya jumped off the building and grappled to safety and decided to blow off some steam and take down some people up to no good. Just stay down, Midraya said to the criminal who was trying to rob a man yo. A man said from the dark who's there? Midraya asked taking a step back the man launched an attack that Midraya was just barely able to dodge. Too fast. Midraya thought as he prepared to escape calm down just wanted to see how good you were. Hawks said appearing out from the dark and an attack aimed at my face was the best, way to test me? Midraya said annoyed it wouldn't have hurt if it connected. Hawks said laughing as he walked up to Midraya so what do you want? Midraya asked still on the defense Midraya knew that he was no match for Hawks speed or movement. Well just wanted to ask you something is all Midraya Hawks said putting his arm on Midraya's shoulder how much do you know? Midraya said pushing, Hawks away hey hey whoa calm down I've known since about the beginning Hawks explained your wings right? I should have known, so you put that bounty out knowing full well who I was. Midraya asked finally relaxing yeah I just wanted to see how you would react and you didn't disappoint. Hawks said with a smile Hawks put his arm over Midraya's shoulder in a friendly manner and spoke. Listen, that Dika City business was nasty but what's to come is worse now that the club reached its donation goal so train hard kid. Hawks said with a serious face Midraya looked over to look at Hawks with wide eyes. You might be the person to tip the scales. Hawks said as he flew away it can't be. Midraya said under his breath. Chapter 28 Totoraki watched as the class whispered about a new, black-haired teen who was to be their teacher. He doesn't look like much. Totoraki thought as he got a look at the teen Bakugu had been subdued by Aizawa for trying to attack Madraya but aside from that incident, the entire class was on edge. After classes, Totoraki was certain Madraya was no match for his ice but he couldn't shake the feeling of being on guard every time he was near the, villain. So what are your thoughts on the new teacher? Kaminari asked Totoraki always kept to himself but he decided to respond for once. I think we should keep our guard up around him just to be safe. Totoraki replied coldly before going to his dorm room. Kaminari was surprised Totoraki replied to him for once. Hey wait. Come on let's keep talking. Kaminari called out to Totoraki. The next, day. Totoraki was laying on his bed staring at the ceiling thinking about his win against Madraya. The only reason I won was because of how tired he was from defeating my entire class. Totoraki thought Totoraki felt empty from his win after noticing how easily he would have been defeated if his team had gone first. He made me use my fire and even then. Totoraki sighed as he made a, fist. Gasp Totoraki woke up from his deep sleep and decided to go into the kitchen for a glass of water when he heard something in the kitchen. TTA can destroy. The voice whispered Totoraki sneaked closer to the voice and hid behind the wall as to not be seen. Hey are you okay? Kaminari said as tapped Totoraki in the shoulder you startled me. Totoraki said in a whisper why are we whispering? Kaminari asked in a whisper there might be someone dangerous over here. Totoraki whispers as he pointed around the corner Kaminari giggled and walked around the corner and switched on the light to the living room there is nobody here Totoraki. Kaminari said he, I swear I thought I heard something. Totoraki replied as he got himself a cup of water. The next morning. Totoraki, woke up extra early as he wanted to ask Madraya something. Hey. Totoraki called out to the black haired teen who was making coffee hello. Totoraki was it? Midraya greeted the boy yes. I have a request for you. Totoraki said firmly but his palms were sweaty what might that be? Midraya asked after classes today please spar with me in the gym. Totoraki said Totoraki was prepared to be shot down but to his surprise Midraya did the exact opposite. Pride hurt after yesterday? Want to go one on one? Sure I'll ask Aizawa and see if we can. Go to class we will talk later. Midraya said as he finished preparing his coffee the day went by slow as Totoraki felt a sense of dread of fighting Midraya one on one at the end of the day. Ring ring the bell that signaled the end of the day and to his surprise Midraya went up straight up to him. 
some students stayed behind and tried to eavesdrop until Aizawa kicked them out. You got your wish. Get dressed and meet me in the gamut gym. Midraya said as he fixed his tie and made his way to the exit Totoraki gulped and got ready for his fight. In gamut gym. Totoraki was in his hero costume and Midraya was still in his normal, clothes. Don't get mad if I burn your clothes. Totoraki said as he took a fighting stance Aizawa will start the match. The first one on the ground unable to keep fighting wins. Midraya explained 3. 2. 1 go. Aizawa said staring the match Totoraki created a large blast of ice and made sure he had no blind spots. There was silence and only Totoraki's breath and Aizawa could be heard until the sound of ice breaking behind Totoraki could be heard. Behind? Totoraki said as he quickly turned around and used his fire quirk to melt the ice not quite. Midraya said as he swept Totoraki's legs and made him fall to the ground knocking the wind out of him Totoraki caught his breath and laughed for the first time in a while. Ah, it's my loss. Totoraki said as he got up and melted all the leftover ice effects that then. Midraya said as he left Gamage him without another word don't take too hard Totoraki. Clean yourself up and go do your homework. Aizawa said as he left the gym Totoraki, however, felt relieved after the fight and left the gym with a smile. Midraya could have said no to him but he was glad that the fight was allowed to take place. Back to the present. Midraya, stared at the notebook he kept hidden from everyone and slowly opened it up. Scribbled all over the notebook was three words. Take and destroy take and destroy take and destroy take and destroy. Midraya whispered to himself as he closed the notebook. Chapter 29. Midraya, are you okay? You spaced out the whole period. Your Araka asked Midraya the class period had already ended but Midraya was, just sitting in his seat staring at the board. Midraya was murmuring to himself when he finally came back. Huh? Sorry about that, I just got lost in thought. Midraya said as he quickly packed his things don't push yourself too hard okay? Your Araka said with a smile Lazawa looked up from his book and glanced over at Midraya who seemed more mysterious than usual. Midraya was heading back to his dorm room to get some work done when he heard something. You can hear me. I know you can a dry cackle said Midraya quickly turned around only to be met with an empty hallway. Hey was that one of you guys? Midraya whispered as he walked to his dorm don't know do not know. Not us. The voices replied this voice was a singular entity unlike the voices which communicated in unison. Learn, you need to learn to use us. The voices said repeatedly hey Midraya we were wondering if you wanted to help with some of the Christmas stuff that Kirishima was about to ask before he was interrupted by Midraya I can't, I'm sorry. Midraya said as he went up to his dorm Midraya went to sleep early that night and was met with a dream that would change the world. Hey, how are you holding, up? A skinny man asked you're the original holder of one for all. Midraya said Midraya looked down at his non-existent body and looked up at the skinny man. What do you want? Midraya asked breaking the silence just to check up. The skinny man replied I'm doing fine and I think they are too. Midraya said as he pointed to the large crowd glad to see you have reached an understanding with them. The skinny man said with a warm smile yeah well, they aren't so bad. I think. Midraya said as he looked over at the crowd I'm glad you were able to find some common ground with the ones trapped here the skinny man said with a smile the skinny man fiddled with his fingers and spoke up. Listen my time is nearly up but I have to tell you that something is wrong. I feel something entering this space but I'm still not sure what it is so be on the lookout. I know you may be having trouble with all this but stay strong and you'll be just fine. The skinny man said before he disappeared like dust in the wind gone he's gone. We can talk now. The crowd said quickly Madraya was worried as to what they had to say and why it needed to be kept a secret from that man. Come closer. Closer you must not let others hear. The crowd whispered others. Midraya thought Midraya made his way to the front of the crowd and saw a little girl with a flower in her hand signaling Midraya over. What do you need to tell me that so Midraya was about to ask when his eyes widened the little girl giggled and whispered into Midraya's ear with a smile. I. 
can't do that it's impossible to. Madraya, retorted quickly before he was interrupted the little girl giggled once more and continued. Madraya staggered backward and began to process what he was just told by the little girl. But why? Madraya asked it must be broken so we can be free. The voices said before fading away into the darkness Madraya gasped and he woke up to the sound of birds chirping in the distance and the warm sun in his face. What a nightmare! Madraya said as he looked at his ceiling Madraya knew it was possible to do as they asked but aside from being extremely hard to pull off, he would have to break his only rule. What a shit show! Midraya sighed as he got dressed the Christmas Eve party was today but along with that was the sudden arrival of internships. In Niza's office. So where do we send, Midraya? Nezu asked aloud we could send him to intern with a smaller agency. All might suggested they won't take him. Azawa sighed Midraya was not trusted by many heroes even after being cleared by Nezu. I have an idea but I'm going to need your permission, Principal. Aizawa said as he took a sip of his coffee later that day. Midraya was the only one not enjoying the party as the words, of the little girl in his dream kept repeating itself in his head. Hey, you okay? Tenya asked him, yeah yeah I'm fine. Just wondering about the internships is all. Midraya replied so have any idea where you're headed? Kaminari asked Midraya Midraya shook his head and looked down at his cup of soda. So and I are going back to Ryukyu's agency. Your Araka chimed in sorry we're late. Azawa, said as he walked in with Yuri in a Christmas themed dress we were just talking about the upcoming internships sensei. Said Oh explained speaking of internships. Midraya you are coming with me for your internships so be ready. Azawa said woe with Azawa. Sedo said surprised good luck Midraya Mina said taking a sip of her soda in remembrance of Midraya jokingly the class laughed at Mina's joke and let Midraya and Azawa have their privacy to talk about the internship. Thank you for having me. Midraya said as he bowed his head all right, you can cut that out. Azawa said the rest of the party went without incident until late that night when everyone was asleep. Good night everyone. Mina said with a yawn Merry Christmas mom. Midraya said before hanging up the phone 2 a.m., Midraya was standing outside in the patch of trees away from the dorms. Okay, I can do this. Probably. Midraya said as he took a deep breath all for one the pain was unbearable and Midraya felt as if his head was being torn up from the inside. Yigjit. Midraya groaned in pain Midraya was having doubts about going through with the plan and subjecting himself to this torture until he heard a voice. Someone new. Someone new is here. The voices notified Midraya I can feel you. The dry voice cackled who is this? Midraya asked in pain it hasn't been that long has it? The dry voice sneered Shigaraki. Then that means you. Midraya was about to say when he was cut off all of sudden the pain disappeared and Midraya felt a chill go down his spine. Yup I'm getting myself a eh? Big power up and soon this whole world is going to burn with your annoying ass in it. So stay alive until then okay? See you later. Shigaraki said laughing he is gone. Not connected to us like Madraya but getting closer. The voices explained Madraya laid down on the cold grass and caught his breath. So what do I do? Madraya asked move forward. The voices said okay I'll try. Madraya said in between breaths one month later. Midraya was on a rooftop with Aizawa patrolling the city of Hazu at night. Did I ever tell you about some vigilante I knew a few years back? Aizawa said as he took a sip of a coffee he had recently bought Midraya knew of a few vigilantes but like most, they all went quiet after some time and vanished. Damn kid went by the dumbest name, the crawler, he called himself. Azawa chuckled there aren't many vigilantes nowadays. I think I'm the only one that popped up recently in years. Midraya replied yea they all sort of disappeared didn't they? I hope the kid is okay, he had what it took to be a hero but it wasn't meant to be. Azawa sighed something on your mind? Midraya asked Azawa closed his eyes and stood up quickly facing, Midraya. Whose side are you really on Midraya? Azawa asked firmly Madraya knew he would be asked this question eventually but not from Azawa. 
If I said I'm on the side of the greater good what would you say? Midraya replied as he slowly got up I'd say you're full of shit. I've seen you using all for one in secret. Got a taste of the power and now you want the whole pot? Aizawa said, angrily taking a few steps forward what can I say to calm you down? Midraya asked as he got ready for a fight explain to me what you're doing in secret. Aizawa said Midraya paused for a second and thought of what to say, he couldn't get caught now. Lie. The voices whispered I'm learning to use the quirk so I can return what has been stolen. The voices have told me it's possible if I train, hard enough. Midraya explained Aizawa paused to look at Midraya's body movement to see if he was nervous. How do you know if they are telling the truth? Aizawa asked I don't but it's worth a try wouldn't you say? Midraya replied we have a situation at the mall. Can any heroes or nearby police respond? The policewoman asked over the radio situation. Let's go. Aizawa said as he pointed, the direction they needed to go Midraya was following behind the hero when he was stopped by Aizawa who turned around suddenly. If I find out you're a traitor, I'll personally throw you Tartarus myself got it. Aizawa said angrily Midraya didn't say a word and simply followed Aizawa to the destination. The rest of that night Aizawa and Midraya didn't say another word to each other. However many, civilians came to agree that they were the best duo they had ever seen, taking down villains swiftly and quietly. Two weeks later. We got a joint op with one of your classmates group internship agency so be on your best behavior. Aizawa said as he opened the door to the large building of Rika Midraya had grown quiet in recent weeks because of his recent talk with Aizawa. How are you, doing Edshot? Aizawa asked I'm fine and thanks again for helping us out with this mission. Edshot said as he bowed not a problem. How are the students? Aizawa asked as he looked over at Saro, Kaminari, and Shiyazaki they are good, they move well with Kami Woods and Mount Lady. Edshot said that's good to hear. Aizawa sighed in relief Edshot looked over at Madraya who was sitting, alone at a table staring into space. What about your intern? Edshot asked Aizawa sighed and looked over his shoulder to take a look at the teen. Sometimes I think he is too skilled for his good, the kid has good intentions but I think he forgets how we do things on this side from time to time. Aizawa explained so what's the job? Aizawa asked we found a large CRC cell in the outskirts of, Hazu and we needed just a few more hands for the raid. Edshot said sounds good. Aizawa replied the students that were with Edshot's team got in position outside the large mansion. Did you guys talk to Madraya by any chance today? Kaminari asked his classmates no he was off on his own most of the time, I tried talking to him but our conversation went cold. Saro replied I also could not, find an appropriate moment to approach him. Shiyazaki added ok guys let's be on alert we are going to start this up soon. Mount Lady said listen up we need to capture these guys and try your best not to let any escape. Kami explained Aizawa are you in Midraya position? Edshot asked Midraya and Aizawa were to start things off by breaking in and taking out as many as they could silently. Still can't believe we're working with that kid. Mount Lady said in an annoyed tone we are going in. Aizawa said over the radio the mansion was quiet and the raid began with Midraya and Aizawa in the front lines. This was Midraya's first real mission as a student of U.A. But much to Aizawa's surprise Midraya was still as cold and calculated as ever. I'm breaching. Midraya said quietly on the... Radio Madraya threw a flash bang into the room and instantly took out the two CRC members by slamming one member's head into the ground and the other being punched right in the jaw knocking him out cold. Two down. Moving to the next room. Madraya said Aizawa looked at Madraya's handiwork impressed but also afraid of the monster Madraya truly could be if he were an enemy. Okay, we've cleared, the top floor of the mansion. Aizawa said over the radio Edshot took a moment to process what Aizawa said. Really? Edshot asked Ye we're moving down. You guys should begin your assault on my go. Aizawa said quietly over the radio smashed down a large chunk of the mansion so that the entrance was completely exposed. The rest of the team began to take out several CRC members on the main floor. These guys don't stand a chance. 
Camus said as he took out several members in one go the main floor was soon secured and a total of 24 members were restrained by the students and pro heroes. OK we're moving up to you guys Azawa. Edshot said over the radio no need. We I mean Madriya took care of them already. Azawa replied there were more than 30 members up there. Mount Lady said over the radio as she followed Deadshot, and the others to regroup in the middle of the room stood Madriya standing over all of the members he had taken out by himself. My god! Camu thought as he looked at all the unconscious bodies this kid. Mount Lady thought as she felt a shiver Edshot turned off his radio and walked over to Azawa and pulled him off to the side. Hey look I understand that he is good but it looks like a monster, tore this place up. Edshot whispered he told me he just needed to blow off some steam. Azawa sighed as he looked over his shoulder I wouldn't want to see this guy angry if this was just blowing off some steam Edshot said good job down there. Midraya said to the students I was kind of scared but when I knew you were up here with only Azawa I had to step up. Kaminari said Midraya, smiled and patted Kaminari in the back and praised the rest of his students on a job well done and followed Azawa outside for some fresh air. Midraya is quite skilled is he not? Shiyazaki said as soon Midraya left the room I don't see myself getting close to him anytime soon guys. Sarah said as he looked at the 20 restrained men a few days before the end of winter break. 3 p.m. Madraya was listening to some tips Azawa had for him until they both heard a scream from the next street over. You hear that? Azawa asked as he ran toward the scream Madraya nodded and quickly followed behind Azawa to find out what happened. Whoa is that him? The woman asked the man next to her yeah it's Hawks. The man said as he quickly pulled out his phone Hawks had taken down a man trying to rob an old lady on the street. Azawa and Madraya were about to leave since the situation was under control until Hawks called out to them. Yo Eraserhead. Hawks called out with a big smile Azawa closed his eyes and exhaled before turning around to face the winged hero. Hello Hawks. Azawa said greeting the hero I heard you and your apprentice there arrive. Hawks said as he waved at. Madraya it's an honor to meet you Madraya said same here kid. Hawks said with a smile Madraya knew Hawks recognized him but they had to act as if this was their first meeting. Seems like you have this under control so we are going to head out Hawks. Azawa said wait I gotta give you guys something. Hawks said as he pulled out two books and tossed them over to Azawa and Madraya what's this? Madraya asked as he caught the book ever heard of the special abilities liberation front? Hawks asked with a smile Lazawa and Madraya's ears perked up when they heard that name. Pro heroes were usually in the loop when it came to usual raids and operations but a few select heroes such as Azawa who specialized in night and undercover ops were usually told months in advance about potential dangers. Yeah here check it out. Hawks said as his face turned serious Hawks knew Madraya and Azawa knew all about the Liberation Army but he had to be careful as to not expose himself because the Liberation had planted secret audio bugs on him. I gave one to Endeavor, Shito, and that one kid with explosions but Endeavor can be a slow poke at times so tell him all about it later yay? Hawks, said with a smile thank you I'll read it when I have some spare time. Midraya replied as he put the book in his small pack see you, round guys. Hawks said as he flew away by. Azawa said Midraya and Azawa went to a rooftop to talk in private about what just happened. Find anything yet? Azawa asked well there are a lot of highlights in random places, I think it's a code. Midraya replied as he flipped through the pages of the book after a few hours Azawa had finally cracked the code that Hawks had left behind. My god. Azawa said as he closed the book and brushed his hair back figure something out? Midraya asked as he closed his book the league has taken over the Liberation Army and we have four months to get ready. Azawa said as he let out an exasperated sigh damn, did it say how many people they have? Midraya asked as he handed Azawa a water bottle from his pack Azawa took a sip of his water, laid on his back and closed his eyes feeling the fresh wind over a hundred thousand. Azawa said Madraya closed his eyes and fell onto the floor like Azawa. This stuff is too stressful, how do you do it? Madraya asked I sleep and drink protein shakes, I'm sure I've shaved off two years of my life from this stress. 
Azawa chuckled you and me both red eyes. Midraya replied jokingly Azawa let out a laugh and watched the clouds in the sky. I think I'm going to take a nap here. Azawa said Midraya looked over at Azawa and decided to take a nap as well. Surprisingly when they both woke up from their nap they agreed it was the most relaxed they had, been for a while. Chapter 30 The students were all still going to their internships even after the end of winter break, being prepared in secret to fight against the threat of the Liberation Army in three months. Midraya was of course still under Azawa but little did he know what plagued his friend behind closed doors. After all this time, Azawa sighed as he looked at a picture of his old friend. Knock knock Azawa placed the frame down and opened the door to reveal Midraya. What do you want? Azawa asked calm down I just came to turn in some papers. Midraya answered all right, thanks. Azawa said as he grabbed the folder Midraya was about to take his leave when Azawa grabbed his shoulder, stopping him. Hold up. Azawa said what is it? Midraya asked turning around Azawa made a fist and turned around to get the picture of his old friend. Do you know who this is? Azawa asked showing Midraya the photo Midraya paused to examine the photo of the light blue haired boy. Yea I do know who he is. Midraya said Azawa took a good look at Midraya and realized he was hiding something. What do you know about Shai Rakamo Obaro? Azawa asked as his eyes became serious. A classmate of yours who got killed by a villain and I know he was very close to you. Midraya replied Azawa knew that using the internet to look up deaths in the U.A was not hard by any means but Midraya knew more than he was letting on. Shai Rakamo Obaro one of the few I considered a friend. Midraya you're good at hiding secrets so if you know something tell me now. Azawa said in a low voice Midraya closed his eyes knowing he was going to regret this decision but if he was going to regain Azawa's trust he had to tell him your friend's body was switched out before he was buried. Midraya said Azawa knew this already but he wanted to hear it come from Midraya himself. Before I left the league I tried to find anything that could help me take them down if they ever crossed me, but all I could find was documents regarding stolen quirks. No one in the league dared to cross off for one so he had nothing to fear when it came to secret documents. Kuragiri isn't a man but a Nama mixed with many other quirks to make one singular teleportation quirk. I found a lot of random names but one I did recognize was your old friend Shai Rakmo. I knew this for some time. Madraya, explained Azawa closed his fist and struck Madraya across the face with all his might. Midraya knew it was coming but he had to endure it. I know this already, what is pissing me off is why did you keep this from me? Azawa asked angrily sometimes ignorance is bliss Azawa but if hitting me makes you feel better then keep going Midraya said as he spit out some blood shut up. Azawa said, angrily as he began to beat Midraya with his fists Midraya's I was now a bit swollen after that punch and blood began to drip from Azawa's knuckles. I'm sorry. Midraya said in a groggy voice Azawa realized what he was doing and saw the blood on Midraya's face and stopped himself before he did any more damage. Tomorrow you're coming with me. Azawa said as he pulled Midraya up and gave him some ice from his fridge wrapped in a small clean towel Midraya went back to his room and cleaned up his face before laying on his bed. What a mess. Midraya sighed as he closed his eyes and drifted to sleep the next morning. Midraya woke up and stared at his white ceiling thinking about the day to come. The halls were barren as the students had gone off to their internships and the only ones left were the students in the general course who were having normal classes. Hey, you ready to head out? Azawa asked Yay, what's this all about Azawa? Midraya asked Azawa didn't reply and led Midraya to his car which was parked in front of the school. What we are doing now is off the books. Azawa said before starting the car Midraya knew that they were going to break more, than just a couple of rules today. At Tarcher's prison. ID. The toll guard asked here you go and I have this one coming along with me as well. Azawa said as he pointed at Midraya who was in the passenger seat the guard knew who Midraya was and was hesitant to let either of them in now. Give me a second. The guard said as he fiddled with Azawa's ID the guard stepped into his little toll cubicle and shut the door to make a phone call regarding the situation. Okay, 
you're cleared to enter. The guard said as he stared at Midraya the large maximum security prison was heavily guarded and housed only the most dangerous villains. Mind telling me what we are doing here? Midraya asked Tezawa ignored Midraya and drove to the next checkpoint where they would be searched and have their car parked. 30 minutes later. Midraya was patted down and searched numerous times, unlike Aizawa who was patted down only once. Come here. Aizawa said as he walked around the corner to reveal a door at the end of the hall Aizawa stood in front of the door and took a deep breath before opening the door. Is that? Midraya asked Kuragiri aka Obaro Shikamaro. My old friend. Aizawa said as he walked up. To the console which held Kuragiri restrained Madraya stared at Kuragiri and then back to Aizawa who was staring intently at Kuragiri. Aizawa that isn't Midraya was about to say when he was interrupted it is him. He's in there. Aizawa shouted back Midraya looked over at Aizawa and was met with eyes of desperation. And you're going to pull him out. I'm shutting off the recording equipment, for one minute. Aizawa said firmly Aizawa pressed a button and it opened the door that led to Kuragiri's cell. Aizawa this isn't going to Madraya said before he was interrupted once again go into the room if not I'm telling everyone about your secret training. Aizawa said angrily Madraya closed his eyes and exhaled through his nose and went inside the cell. I'm going to bring him back and, you do something. I'll keep him from using his cork but that's all I can do Aizawa said as he began to press some buttons a few seconds passed and the dormant mist opened its eyes. It's nice to see you again Kuragiri. Midraya said golden egg you've betrayed us. Kuragiri replied there was a pause and Midraya decided to let Kuragiri speak before doing anything. I can see it in your eyes, you've changed, the eyes I knew before were empty and void of feeling. Tell me how does it feel to go running back to those who tossed you aside? Kuragi re-asked I've learned something that I know no one in the league could ever understand. Redemption and the road that comes along with it is a difficult path but when you reach the finish line it's worth it. Midraya replied calmly we cannot, redeem ourselves and you will see it soon enough. When the time comes everyone will still see you for what you are. A villain. Kuragiri explained Kuragiri looked over at Aizawa who was behind the console I see your associate still thinks I'm someone from his past. Kuragiri responded yes but he's not wrong. Midraya said as he walked up to Kuragiri and placed his hand on his metal brace, W what are you doing? Kuragiri asked nervously all for one Midraya closed his eyes and saw himself in a dark room with a crowd of people pointing in one direction. Hello? Midraya asked as he walked over to the direction he was shown who? Who is there? The wavy-haired apparition asked Obaro Shirakamo. Midraya asked as he approached slowly the apparition turned around and revealed a boy, with many stitches on his head and body. I'm an associate of Azawa. Midraya said Azawa. Is? Okay. We won? Shirakamo asked Midraya realized that the reason Shirakamo was having trouble functioning must have been due to the procedure of becoming a Namu. Yes he's fine but listen I need you to help me out here okay? How do I get you out of this or at least give you control of the body you have right now? Midraya asked quickly Shirakamo twitched violently for a second and then responded. I. Can't. Trapped Shirakamo said Madraya let out a frustrated sigh and turned around to face the crowd of shadows who were staring at him. I'm open for suggestions. Midraya said he must fight it. Fight and win then he can be free. The voices said yay that really helps, Midraya said frustrated listen I don't have much time so is there anything you want to tell me while you still can? Midraya asked tell. Azawa. Sushi. Is. On. Me. Shirakamo said with a smile before he disappeared Madraya fell back and noticed Kuragiri was already knocked out after that interaction. Madraya's head felt like it was being torn apart. Aizawa helped Madraya out of the cell and turned the security camera back on. Well did you pull him out? Aizawa asked it's not that easy Aizawa, I can't just pull him out of whatever the hell they did to him, I'm sorry. Midraya explained Aizawa fell to the ground and tears slowly began to roll down his cheeks as he punched the ground with his fists. 
Let's get out of here. Aizawa said as he slowly stood up. Wait he did. Tell me something Aizawa. Midraya said quickly there was a moment of silence and Midraya relayed the message given to him. He said tell Aizawa sushi is on me. Midraya said Aizawa stood in silence for a few seconds and began to laugh and then he fell to the ground crying. That blue haired idiot and his sushi. Aizawa said Midraya let Aizawa let it all out and sat across from him. Let's get out of here man. Aizawa said later that day. The car ride back to Udata it was silent until Aizawa spoke up at random. Listen Midraya I'm sorry about all of this. Aizawa said don't worry about it, if there was even the slightest chance, I would have done the same. Midraya replied Midraya looked out his window and watched the people and lights pass by him. How about some sushi on me huh? Aizawa asked sure I could go for some sushi. Midraya replied I know this great place Shirakamo showed me that isn't too far from you eh? he told me only to take friends because the sushi was just that good Aizawa explained with a laugh Midraya felt a smile come across his face when he heard those words come from Aizawa. The night ended with two friends filling themselves up with sushi and ill, they couldn't eat another bite. One week later, Midraya watched as his classmates, students left the school to attend their internships. A sad smile grew across his face. Madraya. All Might said with a smile All Might how are you, I haven't seen you lately. Madraya replied All Might was focused on working with Mirio and helping him learn the quirk he entrusted to him. I'm guessing you've heard about the upcoming raid. All Might said as he watched the students wish each other good luck we are the same age and yet I feel they are too young for this. Plunged into this fight for good and they still haven't even learned how to drive. Midraya said as he gripped the pieces of paper in his hand you have shown them many things and I think because of your teaching they will be ready, for anything Midraya. All Might said with a smile Midraya exhaled deeply and shook his head at All Might. You know it's funny, I'm not even allowed to fight alongside them. Midraya said frustrated what do you mean, are you part of a different group or? All Might asked I mean I got told just yesterday. On the day of the raid. I'm not allowed off the premises. Midraya explained I'll go, speak to someone this is ridiculous. All Might said don't. It was a vote between all heroes and only the teachers from here chose to have me involved. All the other heroes all agreed I was not to be trusted with such a sensitive mission and I understand their decision but I can't help but feel like nothing has changed. I'm still just a villain to everyone. Midraya explained Midraya turned around to go back into the dorms. If that's their choice then so be it. Midraya said before closing the door behind him Aizawa was frustrated that Midraya could not come along for the raid against the Liberation Army. I wish he could join in too Aizawa. Nezu said why are they? Midraya has the power and skill to take out one fourth of that army on his own and they insist on leaving him out. Aizawa said as he sat down angrily they decided he was not to be trusted except for Hawks who chose to include him. Nezu said frustrated still it must feel horrible sending out his classmates and students into such a dangerous mission but unable to watch their backs. Aizawa said calming down Midraya was sitting in his room tapping away at his legs, he always kept his cool but this time it was, different. I can't do it. Midraya whispered you must. The voices said Midraya closed his eyes and kept tapping his feet until he heard a knock at his door. I'm coming. Midraya said as he walked over to the door hey, problem child how are you? Mirio said hello. Eri greeted Midraya Midraya returned Eri a smile and felt a sting of guilt in his body. So we were thinking of having a picnic. Mirio said not today guys. Midraya apologized all, oh, man. Mirio said bummed out but hey get her candy for me okay? Midraya said as he pulled out some cash and gave it to Mirio that sound okay to you? Mirio asked Eri would like to taste a sour candy. Eri said with a smile sour candy it is then. Mirio said as he picked up Eri and put her on his shoulders bye, you too. Midraya, said forcing a smile bye. Eri said as she waved goodbye. I hope this works. Midraya said it will. It will. The voices whispered two days left until the raid. 
The days went by quickly as Midraya tried his best to prepare both Class 1A and Class 1B for the war they were going to be thrown into. I can feel him getting closer. Midraya said as he lay on his bed the original is, being passed on to him. The voices said Midraya sighed and made his way to the closet. The suitcase which held his vigilante costume stared back at him. No going back. Midraya said as he pulled out the suitcase and got it battle ready. After Midraya finished he placed the costume away and decided to take a walk around the school alone. It's for the greater good. Midraya whispered to himself repeatedly as he followed the sidewalk until All Might came behind Midraya. Hey! All Might said out of breath Midraya was caught off guard and jumped a bit. All Might. Midraya said Midraya was worried and anxious on the inside but on the outside, he was calm and collected. Out for a walk eh? All Might said jogging in place just thinking about what we talked about the other day. Midraya replied All Might stopped, jogging in place and walked with Midraya to try and give him some advice since he was technically a student. You know Mirio isn't allowed in the raid either. All Might said I can already guess why. Midraya said if word got out about one for all now the world would just have another crisis on its hands. Mirio knows that if he showed off this strength in the raid many would want an explanation. All Might explained how is he doing in his training anyway. Midraya asked well, he has manifested a new quirk known as Black Quip and can control up to 50% power. All Might said rubbing the back of his neck wait, that's impossible. Midraya said that's what I thought too but he came one day and told me that he spoke to one of the previous holders of one for all and learned about Black Whip. All Might explained then that means he can learn all the other quirks from the previous holders as well? Midraya asked somewhat worried it seems like but if he can learn all these quirks he can bring peace to the world. All Might said with a smile Midraya blacked out and found himself in the dreamscape as he liked to call it. The shadowy crowd stared at Midraya until a small girl walked up to Midraya who was perfectly visible. Who are you? Midraya asked taking a step back Midraya was confused as to why this new girl was perfectly visible. The little girl with black hair pigtails walked to Midraya and handed him a photo. This is. Midraya said looking down at the photo and back at the girl Midraya looked around and saw that the shadowy crowd was afraid of the entity. The girl looked at Midraya with a smile and signaled him over causing him to fall to his knees. Let's become heroes together like grandma. She whispered into his ear as she looked behind Midraya. Midraya felt a chill go down his spine as he turned around and saw a perfectly visible family that disappeared in the blink of an eye. Midraya? Midraya you alright? All Might asked, huh? Oh, yay just lost in thought. Midraya replied quickly I lost you for a moment there. All Might said patting Midraya in the back anyway the quirk he is going to learn next is from my mentor All Might was about to say when he was interrupted Nanisha Mora. Midraya said finishing All Might's sentence yes, I'm surprised you know. All Might said All Might aren't you worried? Midraya, asked him. About what? All Might asked one for all is evolving to the point of passing down quirks from other holders. The quirk is going to be even stronger in a few generations. Midraya explained don't worry the quirk can't be stolen Midraya. All Might said reassuring Midraya with a smile before he went ahead and finished his jog Midraya made a fist in frustration at the comment. The quirk couldn't be stolen but there is no telling who it will be passed on to in the future and it's foolish to think that the quirk will stay in the hands of justice forever. That night. Midraya was lying in bed thinking about his life and how many twists and turns it has taken until he drifted off to sleep. Hello, Midraya. All for one greeted in a cold voice I think you've noticed by now, that Shigaraki is getting closer and closer to his goal. All for one said as he got closer to Midraya what do you want? Midraya asked well, I just wanted to check in on my little pet project. All for one said coming from a man's trap to a chair. Midraya said with a chuckle all for one smiled and looked behind him at the crowd that intently watched. So you've gotten close with the, tools. All for one said showing a hint of annoyance I wouldn't call them tools but say what you want. Midraya said no matter, 
your mind will crumble soon enough and I'll be sure to send you and your mother a postcard. All for one said with a wicked smile lay a hand on my mother and you will regret it all for one. Midraya said angrily we will see about Midraya. All for one said as he, disappeared. Chapter 31 The hallways were quiet and empty as the students left with their respective groups to finally put an end to the Liga and Deliberation Army. Elsewhere. Kamenari was in a truck sitting with a group of pros, his hands were sweating profusely as he tried to prepare himself for what was to come. Ease your nerves boy. Manuel said as he patted Kamenari in the back, Kamenari nodded but he was starting to feel the nerves overwhelm him as he watched the rest of his class go in another direction except for Tokoyami and a few other students. The forest surrounding the mansion was thick enough for the heroes to sneak in unseen but the real fight was taking place in the hospital where Shigaraki was being held. We are in position. Midnight said in a low voice as, she looked over at Cementos who was keeping an eye out for any stragglers on the outside. We are good. Cementos said as he gave a thumbs up back at you eh? Midraya paced in his room glancing over at his costume from time to time. You must. The voices shouted what if they pull it off? Who knows maybe they will stop them. Midraya said you know this is the only way to save everyone. The voices said stand idly by and let fate guide everything? Or twist fate and make it bend to your will? Sir Nighty's words echoed in Midraya's mind Midraya stopped dead in his tracks and imagined his students who he now saw as friends slaughtered before him. There was a slight pause and Midraya picked up his costume. I cannot allow this to continue any longer. Midraya said under his breath, back at the raid. Kaminari ran alongside with the pros as they rushed the building after Cementos made a large hole in the front. I'll blow them all away with my quirk. The man said as he charged up an attack against the pros Kaminari felt the sudden surge and turned to look at the man who was now shooting a large electric wave at his group. A few months before well against other lighting types you should be fine. From what I can tell your quirk is the first to be able to store and discharge naturally. I've met lighting types but they usually need a jump like wire or outlet and they can't absorb electricity flying around either so you should win most of the time. Midraya said as he showed his notes to Kaminari. Kaminari trusted in Midraya's words from that time and raised a finger in the air to absorb the electricity. I'll do my best to keep my friends in the back safe. Kaminari said with a heroic smile in a rooftop nearby. Midraya stood and watched as the rest of Class 1A evacuated the civilians. What is this formation? Midraya said frustrated Totoraki, Bakugu, and many other heavy hitters were in the back evacuating civilians. Midraya watched and, thought about going to the mansion to help until he noticed a small group of the Liberation Army getting ready to ambush the heroes and students helping the civilians. If we can kill at least some. A man said no only go for the kids. Kill them and we can crush their morale. The woman said with a smile Midraya felt a chill in Sawyer Araka, Mina, Totoraki, and even Bakugu covered in blood before. Him for a split second. So we kill the kids and try to get out, yes? The teen asked yes and then we the woman was about to say when she was interrupted by the sound of footsteps approaching you some hero? The man scoffed as he walked toward Midraya. Midraya looked at the man walking towards him. Vigilant sex slaughter fucking animal. Midraya said in a menacing voice the man shuddered at the comment and quickly tried to defend himself from Midraya but before he could even enable his quirk he was on the floor. Huh? The man said Midraya broke the man's arm and then kicked him and his privates causing him to curl up. Please. The man begged as he crawled back to the woman and teen who were in disbelief Midraya knelt and punched the man in the jaw with all his might knocking him, out. Oh my god. The teen said as he fell backward villains were used to being knocked out and fighting with quirks as tools. To see a body be twisted and mangled by someone's hand was something new. Strengthened air cannon Midraya dashed toward the teen at high speed and kicked him in his left side causing him to go flying toward a building. The teen fell to the ground after slamming against a wall and went limp. You're a hero, you don't do things like this. Please spare me. Look I surrender to you see. 
the woman said with a nervous smile as she raised her hands in the air and got on her knees. Would you give someone else this mercy? Midraya asked as he walked around behind the woman. The woman closed her eyes and began to tear up. Midraya let out a small cold laugh and leaned in, behind the woman and whispered in her ear. There is your answer. Midraya whispered in a cold voice. Midraya covered the woman's mouth and broke her right arm in one swift motion. Your so-called army is filled with pathetic excuses of human beings who wish to use their power to get whatever they want. Midraya grunted as he broke her other arm. The woman shrieked but no one could hear her, screams with Midraya's hand over her mouth. Killing a couple of kids. You don't deserve mercy. Midraya said oozing bloodlust. The woman was in so much pain that she couldn't even respond when Midraya got a hold of her head and slammed it into the ground knocking her unconscious. Midraya tied their bodies on a nearby pole which heroes were patrolling often so they could be taken away. There was, a large boom in the distance and Midraya, began to make his way towards it but unbeknownst to everyone something had changed in Midraya in those few short minutes. Back at the raid. The heroes were being pushed back by Gaiden who was making large walls of ice. I can't hold on forever midnight said slowly retreating backward the heroes retreated but someone flew past them at such a high speed they couldn't even see who it was get that one the man said as he ran towards mentos who had tripped while retreating the blur landed a punch right at the villain's gut sending him flying backward who is fee the villain was about to say when a large gust of air pushed him back madraya was now standing in between both sides who were puzzled at this new fighter who is that Cementos asked Midnight after he got up and made, his way back to the group I don't recognize the costume. Midnight said as she looked at the white and red costume I'm the fastest one here so how about I take him? A villain shouted as he dashed toward Midraya at high speed Midraya watched as the man quickly made his way toward him. The villain tried to stab Midraya but he was surprised to see Midraya dodge him with ease. What the the? Men said as he looked over at Midraya Midraya quickly broke the man's arm and stole his knife then stabbed him in the shoulder blade. Ah help me you idiots. The man shrieked in pain you're so loud. Midraya whispered as he quickly stomped on his face knocking him out in one swift motion Midraya stepped over the villain's body toward the liberation army. All for the sake of peace Midraya said reminding himself as he looked at the villains the group was surprised that someone they thought was a hero had gone so far. Overclock time moved slowly and Midraya took out five villains in an instant with his insane speed restarting the clash between heroes and villains. All right it looks like he's on our side but be careful. Cementos said over the radio the heroes began to advance with, extreme caution trying their best not to interfere with the hooded vigilante. No matter. I'll just bury you in ice. Gaten said as he summoned a large ice wall Midraya looked at the large mountain of ice approaching. Watch out it's a big one. Cementos shouted to the heroes behind him was the front liner as she used her large body to smash through the ice and block but this wave was pushing, her back. I don't think I can hold on much longer. Mount Lady shouted strengthened air cannon Madraya quickly made his way to the front and threw a punch which obliterated the wall of ice in an instant. No one mentioned this guy. Gaten said worriedly back up. The villains shouted trying to gain some distance from Madraya. Madraya was about to attack them when he heard screaming coming from behind him and he turned to see him Miko Toga who had slashed a couple heroes and was now perched on a slab of ice staring down at them. Gigan Tomoko also emerged from the ground and reached the surface joining the fight. A society where living is easy. You are in the way of that heroes Tolga said angrily finally. Midraya said as he walked toward Tolga and Gigan Tomoko Tolga dashed toward a distracted hero who was busy fighting a villain and aimed for his neck with her knife. Midraya used air cannon to propel himself toward her and tackled her in mid-air. What the? Toga shouted Toga tried to stab Midraya but her attack missed as Midraya dodged just in time. Who are you huh? Toga asked angrily the one who is going to stop the paranormal liberation army. Midraya said as he, dashed toward Toga Midraya threw a punch and missed but the area behind Toga behind her was destroyed by the sheer force of his air cannon alone. Don't get cocky. 
Toga said as she transformed into your Iraka from class 1A. Toga touched Madraya and made him float high in the air before letting him fall to the ground. I won't let you stand in my way. Toga shouted as she pressed her fingertips, together releasing Madraya. Madraya began to fall to the ground but just before he crashed he used his gauntlets to latch onto a nearby piece of ice. Just give up. Midraya said Tolga couldn't tell who was speaking because of the voice changer Midraya's mask had built in. You guys killed my friend. I'm going to Toga said I don't care. Midraya said interrupting her overclock Midraya sped, up and placed his hand over Toga's face. You're all the same. Villains and criminals want the easy way and are okay with killing and stealing but when they get a taste of their own medicine the world is at fault for their shortcomings. And it makes me sick. There was a short pause and Midraya decided to finally give that a try. You don't deserve this. Midraya said as he held Toga up and, stole her quirk Toga felt a part of herself leave and she began to thrash and scream. Toga kicked off Midraya's hood revealing his short green hair that was no longer black. Midraya let Toga go and she fell on her back, she quickly tried to transform but to no avail. Toga pulled out a hidden blade and lunged at Midraya but was only able to stab his hand. There was no re- Midraya let Toga go and she fell on her back, she quickly tried to transform but to no avail. Toga pulled out a hidden blade and lunged at Midraya but was only able to stab his hand. There was no reaction coming from Midraya as he kicked Toga away and pulled out the knife quickly healing the injury in seconds. Give IT back. I'll kill you. Toga shouted angrily I know all about your past Deku. I'll kill your mother Toga said with a wicked smile Midraya's eye twitched slightly, his dead eyes staring at her as if she was a bug. Wrong choice. Midraya said as he put his hood back on and walked toward Toga a, female's shriek could be heard in the distance.